Coming from the Globe, which is where I was working before, you start to work out and get excited by the relationship between the architecture of a theatre and the play and how certain plays were written for certain architecture. And then after I left the Globe, I was thinking about these glorious late Victorian playhouses and the relationship between the plays written for them and the buildings themselves and how they release each other's energies and uh, bring each other to life in rather glorious ways. And so I thought it'd be great to start a company that would play those uh, plays written for the proscenium arch um, within the proscenium arch and I thought it would be nice to start with Oscar Wilde and celebrate the four great social comedies of his but also to look at other aspects of his life uh, and to do it in a theatre which meant a lot to him. Well the extraordinary thing about Oscar Wilde's reputation is that over the last 117 years since his death it's gone up and down and up and down like a yo-yo and Today, I think he's probably back on that pinnacle of fame and reputation that he had back in, in the 1890s. Uh, Lady Windermere's Fan is the second play in our Oscar Wilde season. Uh, it's directed by my great friend Kathy Burke. She's put together an amazing cast. The wonderful Sam Spiro plays Mrs Erlin. The brilliant Kevin Bishop plays Lord Darlington. And the much-loved and deservedly so Jennifer Saunders plays the Duchess of Berwick. It's a delightful, spry, witty, warm comedy. It's Oscar Wilde's first social comedy. It's the play with which he cracked the code of how to write plays of this sort that delighted an audience and managed to infiltrate amongst a lot of witticism and fun and romance and delight some very provocative, radical thinking about how people behave and how they treat each other and how they ought to behave in a grown-up society. Lady Windermere's fan, the self-sacrifice of the mother, also a very strong feminist message. Um, Oscar Wilde, it's not well known, but was a champion of the early, as it was called then, the new woman. And uh, he found, with this play, a wonderful format in which to put all of his more serious concerns in, but to do it with a great deal of delight and wit and buoyancy and fun. We're delighted that uh, Lady Windermere's fan will be seen in over 420 UK cinemas live tonight. It's a complete thrill. And that we'll be screening in over 20 countries around the world in 2018. The next play in the season, the one that follows Lady Windermere's fan, will be An Ideal Husband, one of Oscar Wilde's best-loved plays. An Ideal Husband tackles the question of political corruption. I can remember it was put on in Paris, London and, and in New York at exactly the time, about 20 years ago, when major political scandals were breaking in all three capitals. Oscar Wilde was a man who loved gadgetry and loved modernity and loved anything that was newfangled and the idea that uh, 120 years after his plays were first performed that they could be seen all over uh, an enormous area on the same night would fill him, I'm sure, with nothing but pleasure.
Is your ladyship at home this afternoon? Yes. Who is called? Lord Darlington, my lady. Show him up. And I'm at home to anyone who calls. Yes, my lady. It's best for me to see him before tonight. I'm glad he's come. Lord Darlington. How do you do, Lady Windermere? How do you do, Lord Darlington? Uh, no, I can't shake hands with you. My hands are all wet with these roses. Uh, Aren't they lovely? My husband had them sent up from Selby this morning. They are quite perfect. <laughs> oh, what a wonderful fan. May I look at it? Oh, do. It's pretty, isn't it? It's got my name on it and everything. Yes. It's Lord Windermere's birthday present to me. You know today is my birthday. No, is it really? Yes, I'm of age today. Quite an important day in my life, isn't it? Hmm. That's why I'm giving this party tonight. Do sit down. I wish I had known it was your birthday, Lady Windermere. I would have covered the whole street in front of your house with flowers for you to walk on. Lord Darlington, you annoyed me last night at the Foreign Office. I'm afraid you're going to annoy me again. I, Lady Windermere? I'm quite miserable. You must tell me what I did. Well, you kept paying me elaborate compliments the whole evening. <laughs> well, nowadays, we are all of us so hard up. The only pleasant things to pay are compliments. <laughs> no, I'm talking very seriously. You mustn't laugh. I don't like compliments. And I don't see why a man should think he is pleasing a woman enormously when he says to her a whole heap of things he doesn't mean. Ah, but I did mean them. Oh, I hope not. <clears throat> I should be sorry to have to quarrel with you, Lord Darlington. I like you very much, you know that. Yeah. But I shouldn't like you at all if I thought you were what most other men are. Yeah. Believe me, you are better than most other men. I sometimes think you pretend to be worse. We all have our little vanities, Lady Windermere. Nowadays, so many conceited people go about society pretending to be good that I think it shows a rather sweet and modest disposition to pretend to be bad. <laughs> if you pretend to be good, the world takes you very seriously. If you pretend to be bad, it doesn't. Such is the astounding stupidity of optimism. Don't you want the world to take you seriously then, Lord Darlington? No, not the world. I should like you to take me seriously, Lady Windermere. You more than anyone else in life. <laughs> Why? Why me? Because I think we might be great friends. Let us be great friends. <laughs> you may want a friend someday. <clears throat> and why do you say that? Oh, we all want friends at times. I think we're very good friends already, Lord Darlington. And we can always remain so, as long as you don't spoil it by saying extravagant, silly things to me. <laughs> I have something of the Puritan in me. I was brought up like that, I'm glad of it. My mother died when I was a mere child. I lived always with Lady Julia, my father's elder sister, you know. She was stern to me, but she taught me what the world is forgetting. The difference that there is between what is right and what is wrong. She allowed of no compromise, I allow of none. <laughs> You look on me as being behind the age. Well, I am. I should be sorry to be on the same level as an age like this. You think the age very bad? Yes. Nowadays, people seem to look on life as a, a speculation. It is not a speculation. It is a sacrament. Its ideal is love. Its purification is sacrifice. <laughs> Anything's better than being sacrificed. Oh, don't say that. Well, I do say it. I feel it. I know it. The men want to know if they're to put the carpets on the terrace for tonight, my lady. Oh, you don't think it's going to rain, Lord Darlington, do you? I won't hear of it's raining on your birthday. <laughs> Tell them to do it at once, Parker. Yes, my lady. Yes, Parker. <laughs> do you think then, of course, I'm only putting an imaginary instance, mm. do you think that in the case of a young couple, say about two years married, that if the husband suddenly becomes the intimate friend of a woman of, well, more than doubtful character, is always calling upon her, lunching with her, and probably paying her bills, do you not think the wife should console herself? Console herself? Yes, I think she should. I think she has the right. Because the husband is vile, should the wife be vile also? Well, vileness is a terrible word, Lady Windermere. Mm, it is a terrible thing, Lord Darlington. And I must say, I think you are very hard on modern life. There is much against it, I admit. Most women, for instance, nowadays are rather mercenary. Oh, don't talk about such people. Well, then... Setting aside mercenary people, who of course are dreadful. <laughs> do you think that women who have committed what the world calls a fault should ever be forgiven? I think they should never be forgiven. And men? Do you think there should be the same laws for men as there are for women? Certainly. You allow no exceptions? None. <laughs> <laughs> what a fascinating Puritan you are, Lady Windermere. <laughs> the adjective was unnecessary, Lord Darlington. I couldn't help it. I can resist everything except temptation. <laughs> 
You have the modern affectation of weakness. It's only an affectation, Lady Windermere. <laughs> the Duchess of Berwick and Lady Agatha Carlyle. <coughs> ah, dear Marcus, I'm so pleased to see you. Now, you remember Agatha, don't you? Ah. Uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> How do you do, Lord Darlington? I won't let you know, my daughter, you're far too wicked. Uh, don't say that, Duchess. As a wicked man, I am a complete failure. Uh, Why, there are lots of people who say I have never done anything wrong in the whole course of my life. Uh, of course, then they sit behind my back. Uh, isn't he dreadful? Agatha, this is Lord Darlington. Mind you, don't believe a word he says. No tea, thank you, dear. Just had tea at Lady Mark Oh, so such bad tea, too. It was quite undrinkable. I wasn't at all surprised. Her own son-in-law supplies it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Agatha is so looking forward to the ball tonight, dear Margaret. Oh, you mustn't think it's going to be a ball, Duchess. It is only a, a dance in honour of my birthday. Uh, a small and early. Uh, very small, very early and very select, Duchess. Yes, well, of course, it's going to be select. We know that, dear Margaret, about your house. Really, is one of the few houses in London where I can take Agatha and where I feel perfectly secure about dear Berwick. <laughs> Don't know what society is coming to. Most dreadful people seem to go everywhere these days. <laughs> Really, someone should make a stand against it. Oh, I will, Duchess. Mm. I will have nobody in my house about whom there is any scandal. <laughs> Don't say that, Lady Windermere. I should never be admitted. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> Men don't matter. <laughs> With women, it's different. We're good, or some of us are at least. Although, you know, we're positively getting elbowed into the corner. Our husbands would really forget our existence if we didn't nag at them from time to time, just to remind them that we have a perfect legal right to do so. Uh, <laughs> it's a curious thing, Duchess, about the game of marriage. Uh, a game, by the way, that is going out of fashion. The wives hold all the honours and invariably lose the odd trick. <laughs> the odd trick? Is that the husband, Lord Darlington? I suppose it would be a rather good name for the modern husband, yes. <laughs> Lord Darlington, how thoroughly depraved you are. Mm, Lord Darlington is trivial. Oh, don't say that, Lady Windermere. But why do you talk so trivially about life, then? Because I think that life is far too important a thing to ever talk seriously about it. Yeah? What does he mean? <laughs> oh, do us a concession to my poor wits, Lord Darlington. Explain to me what you really mean. I'd better not, Duchess. Nowadays, to be intelligible is to be found out. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Lady Windermere. <laughs> I may come tonight, mayn't I? Do let me come. Yes, certainly. But you are not to say foolish, insincere things to people. Ah, you are beginning to reform me, Lady Windermere. It is a dangerous thing to reform anyone. Uh. <laughs> yes. uh. Charming, wicked creature. I like him so much. Yes. I'm delighted he's gone. <laughs> Do you know how sweet you're looking? Where'd you get your gowns? Oh, now, I must tell you... How sorry I am for you, Margaret. The, oh. Agatha, darling. Uh, yes, Mama? Will you go and look over that photograph album I see there? Yes, Mama. <laughs> Dear girl. Do you know I'm so fond of photographs of Switzerland? <laughs> she has such pure taste. But I really am so sorry for you, Margaret. Why, Duchess? Well, on account of that horrid woman. And she dresses so well, too, which makes it even worse. Sets such a bad example. Augustus, you know my disreputable brother, don't you? <laughs> such a trial to us all. Well, Augustus is completely infatuated about her. It's quite scandalous. She's absolutely inadmissible into society. Many a woman has a past. I'm told she has at least a dozen. <laughs> and they all fit. <laughs> Whom are you talking about, Duchess? Oh, Mrs. Erlin. Mrs. Erlin? Well, I never heard of her, Duchess. And what has she to do with me? Oh. Oh, my poor child. Uh, Agatha, darling. Yes, Mama? Now go out onto the terrace and look at the sunset. <laughs> Sweet girl. So devoted to sunsets. <laughs> Shows such refinement of feeling, does it not? I mean, after all, there's nothing like nature, is there? <laughs> but what is it, Duchess? Why do you talk to me about this person? Do you really not know? Because I can assure you we're all so distressed about it. Only last night at Lady Jensen's, everyone was saying how extraordinary it was that of all the men in London... 
Windermere should behave in such a way. My husband? And what has he got to do with any woman of that kind? Yes, what indeed, dear? But that is the point. Oh. He goes to see her continually and stops for hours at a time. And while he's there, she's not at home to anybody. Not that many ladies call on her, dear, but she has a great many disreputable men friends. My own brother, particularly, as I told you. Which is what makes it so dreadful about Windermere. We looked upon him as being such a model husband. But I'm afraid there's no doubt about it. My dear nieces, you know the Savile girls, don't you? Yes, <laughs> nice domestic creatures. <laughs> plain, dreadfully plain, <laughs> but so good. Well, they're always at their window, you know, doing fancy work and making very ugly things for the poor, which <laughs> I do think so useful of them in these dreadful socialistic days. And this terrible woman has taken a house in Curzon Street, right opposite them. Such a respectable street, too. And they tell me Windermere goes there four or five times a week. They see him. They can't help it. And although, of course, they never talk scandal, they remark on it, you know, <laughs> to everyone. But you know the worst of it all? Is that I'm told this woman has got a great deal of money out of somebody. For it seems she came to London six months ago with barely anything to speak of, and now, oh, she's this charming house in Mayfair. She drives ponies in the park every afternoon. And all, all since she's known poor dear Windermere. Oh, I, I can't believe it. But it's perfectly true, dear. The whole of London knows. Which is why I thought it was better to come and talk to you, advise you to take Windermere away at once, to Homburg or, or X where he's got something to amuse him and where you can watch him all day long. <laughs> I can assure you, my dear, on several occasions after I was first married, I had to pretend to be very, very ill <laughs> and was obliged to drink the most unpleasant mineral waters merely to get Berwick out of town. <laughs> he was so extremely susceptible. Although I have to say he never gave away any large amounts of money. No, <laughs> too high principle for that. Arabella, Duchess, it's impossible. We were only married two years. Our child is but six months old. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, the dear pretty baby. Oh, how is the little darling? Is it a boy or a girl? I have a girl. Oh, no, I remember. It's a boy. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, dear. Boys are so wicked. My own boy is excessively immoral. You would not believe the hours he comes home and he's only left Oxford a few months. I really don't know what they teach them there. <laughs> are all men bad? Oh, yes, dear. <laughs> All of them without exception. <laughs> and they never grow any better. <laughs> Men become old, they never become good. Windermere and I married for love. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we begin like that. If it was only Beric's brutal and incessant threats of suicide made me accept him at all, but... Within the year, he was running after all kinds of petticoat, every colour, every shape, every material. <laughs> In fact, before the honeymoon was over, I caught him winking at my maid. Yeah. <laughs> I dismissed her at once without character. <laughs> but now, you know, I really must be going as we're dining out tonight. But mind you don't take this little aberration of Windermere's too much to heart. Just take him abroad. He'll come back to you, all right? Come back to me. Oh, yes, dear. Oh, these wicked women get our husbands away from us, but they always come back. Slightly damaged, of course. But, you know. <laughs> it is very kind of you, Duchess, yes. to come and tell me all this, yes. but I can't believe that my husband is untrue to me. Oh, pretty child. <laughs> yes, I was like that once, but now I know. All men are monsters. <laughs> oh. Oh, you're not going to cry, are you, Margaret? You needn't be afraid, Duchess. I never cry. Oh, good girl. Yes, quite right. <laughs> Crying is the refuge of plain women, but the ruin of pretty ones. Yes. <laughs> Agatha! Agatha, darling. Yes, Mama? Will you go and bid goodbye to Lady Windermere and thank her for your charming visit? <laughs> oh, by the way, I must thank you for sending a card to Mr. Hopper. You know, 
Oh, he's that strapping, rich Australian that everyone is taking such notice of at present. Now, his father made a great fortune selling some kind of food in oh, circular tins, yes, yes. But the son is quite interesting. I think he's attracted by Agatha's clever talk. <laughs> Oh, we're so sorry to lose her, but I do think a mother that doesn't part with a daughter every season has no real affection. <laughs> we're coming tonight, dear. Uh, and take my advice, won't you? Get the poor fellow out of town at once. It's the only thing to do. And don't make scenes. Men hate them. Good girl. Come, Agatha. I understand now what Lord Darlington meant by the imaginary instance of a couple not two years married. Oh, it can't be true. Oh, she spoke of enormous sums of money paid to this woman. I know where Arthur keeps his bank book, in one of the drawers of that desk. I might find out by that. I will find out. No, no, it is some hideous mistake, some silly scandal. He loves me. He loves me. <laughs> but why should I not look? I'm his wife. I have a right to look. Oh, I knew it. There is not a word of truth in this stupid story. <laughs> a second book. That's private. Locked. Mrs. Erlin, 600 pounds. Mrs. Erlin, 700 pounds. Mrs. Erlin, 400 pounds. Oh, it is true. It is true. How horrible. Oh, well, dear. Has the fan been sent home yet? Oh, Margaret, you... You've cut open my bank book. You have no right to do such a thing. Oh, you think it wrong that you are found out, don't well, you? No, I think it wrong that a wife should spy on her husband. I did not spy on you. I never knew of this woman's existence till half an hour ago. Someone who pitied me was kind enough to come and tell me what everyone in London knows already. Your daily visits to Curzon Street, your mad infatuation. The monstrous sums of money you squander on this infamous woman. Oh, no, Margaret, please. Don't talk like that of Mrs Erlin. You don't know how unjust it is. Oh, you are very jealous of Mrs Erlin's honour. I wish you had been jealous of mine. Your honour is untouched, Margaret. You don't for a moment think oh, that I... I think you spend your money strangely, that is all. Oh, don't imagine I mind about the money. As far as I'm concerned, you may squander everything that we have. But what I do mind is that you who have loved me... You who have taught me to love you should pass from the love that is given to the love that is bought. Oh, it's horrible. And it is I who feel degraded. You don't feel anything. I feel stained, utterly stained. You can't realise now how hideous these last six months seem to be. Every kiss you have given me is tainted in my memory. Please don't say that, Margaret. I never loved anyone in the whole world but you. Who is this woman, then? Why do you take a house for I her? I did not take a house for you her. You gave her money to do it, which is the same Right, thing. Margaret, as far as I have known, Mrs Erlin... Is there a Mr Erlin? Or is he a myth? Well, her husband died many years ago. She's alone in the world. No relations? None. Oh, that's rather curious, isn't uh, it? Margaret, I beg you to listen to me. Right, as far as I have known... As far, uh, yes, yes. Uh, as far as I have known, Mrs Erlin, she's conducted herself well. Now, if years oh, ago... Oh, I don't want details about her life. I'm not going to give you any details. I... Look, I tell you simply this. Mrs. Erlin was once honoured and loved and, and respected. She was well born, she had position, and she lost everything. She threw it away, if you like, and, and that's what makes it all the more bitter. Misfortunes one can endure, they're 
accidents. They come from outside. But to suffer for one's own faults, well, there's the sting of life. It was 20 years ago, too. She was little more than a girl then. She'd been a wife for even less time than you had. I am not interested in her. Margaret, you could save this woman. She wants to get back into society, and she wants you to help her. Me? Yes, you. How impertinent of her! I want you to send her an invitation to our party tonight. You are mad! No, 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 I entreat you. Listen, people... People may chatter about her, or... Well, yes, they do chatter about her, of course, but they don't know anything definite against her. And she's been to several houses, not to the houses where you would go, I admit, but still, to houses where people who are in what is called society nowadays do go, but that does not content her. She wants you to receive her at once. As a, a triumph for her, I suppose. No, 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 because she knows that you're a good woman. And that if she comes here once... She will have the chance of a happier, a, a surer life than she has had. And, and she'll make no further effort to know you. Oh, won't you help a woman who is trying to get back? No. If a woman really repents, she never wishes to return to the society that has made or seen her ruin. Oh, I beg of you. I'm going to dress for dinner. And don't mention the subject again this evening, Arthur. Oh, Margaret. Are you fancy because I have no father or mother that I am alone in the world? And that means you can treat me as you choose. You are wrong. I have friends. Many friends. Oh, Margaret, do this for my sake. It's her last chance. And what has that to do with me? Oh, how hard good women are. How weak bad men are. Margaret. None of us men may be good enough for the women we marry. That is quite true. But, but you, you don't for a moment imagine that I would ever... The suggestion is monstrous. Well, why should you be different from other men? I'm told there is hardly a husband in London who does not waste his life over some shameful power. I am not one of them. I am not sure of no, that. No, 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 you are sure. In your heart. Oh, but please, Margaret, please. Please, don't make chasm after chasm between us. God knows the last few minutes have thrust us wide enough apart. Just sit down and write the card. Nothing in the whole world would induce me. Then I will. You are going to invite this woman? Yes. Parker! Yes, my lord. Uh, yes, I have this note sent to a Mrs. Erlin, number 84A Curzon Street. There is no answer. Arthur, mm. if that woman comes here, I shall insult her. Oh, please don't say that. I mean no, it. No, 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 child. If you did such a thing, there's not a woman in London who wouldn't pity you. There is not a good woman in London who would not applaud me. Oh, we have been too lax. We must make an example. I propose to begin tonight. You gave me this fan today. It was your birthday present. If that woman crosses my threshold, I shall... Strike her across the face with it! Margaret, you couldn't do such a thing! You I... don't know me! <laughs> Parker! Yes, my lady. I shall dine in my own room. I see that everything is ready by half past ten. And, Parker, be sure you pronounce the names of the guests very distinctly tonight. Sometimes you speak so fast that I miss them. I'm particularly anxious to hear the names quite clearly so as to make no mistake. You understand, Parker? Yes, my lady. That yes. will do. Yes. That will do. No, Margaret. Margaret. Oh, my God. What shall I do? I dare not tell her who this woman really is. The, the shame would kill her.
so strange that Lord Windermere isn't here. Mr. Hopper is very late, too. You did save those five dances for him, didn't you, Agatha? Uh, yes, Mama. Let me see your card. Oh, so glad Lady Windermere has revived cards. They are a mother's only safeguard. <laughs> you dear, simple little thing. No nice girl should waltz with such particularly younger sons. It looks so fast. And those last two dances you might pass on the terrace with Mr. Hopper. Yes, Mama. The air is so pleasant there. <laughs> Lady Stutfield. <laughs> Mrs. Cowper. Cowper. <laughs> Sir James Royston. Good evening, Lady Stutfield. I suppose this will be the last ball of the season. Oh, I suppose so, Mr. Dumby. It has been a delightful season, hasn't it? Quite delightful. Good evening, Duchess. Uh, I suppose this will be the last ball of the season. Well, I suppose so, Mr. Dunby. It's been a very dull season, hasn't uh, it? Dreadfully dull, dreadfully. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Dunby. I suppose this will be the last ball of the season. Oh, I think not. There'll probably be two more. Lady Jedburgh. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Hopper. How do you do, Lady Windermere? Happy bloody birthday. <laughs> How do you do, Duchess? Oh, no, no, no. There we go. <laughs> oh, Mr. Hopper. How good of you to come so early. We know how you are run after in London. Capital place, London. They're not nearly so exclusive in London as they are in Sydney. Oh, well, we know your value, Mr. Hopper. We wish there were more like you. It would make life a lot easier. No. <laughs> yes. Do you know, Mr. Hopper, Agatha and I are so very interested in Australia. <laughs> yes. It must be so pretty there with all those kangaroos <laughs> yes. flying around. <laughs> Agatha has found it on the map, haven't you, Agatha? Yes, Mama. Oh. <laughs> what a curious shape it is, isn't it? Rather like a large packing case. But a very young country, isn't it? Wasn't it made at the same time as the others, Duchess? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> How clever you are. <laughs> you have a cleverness all of your own. <laughs> yes. Well, don't let us keep you. But I should like to dance with Lady Agatha, Duchess. Oh, well, I wonder if she has a dance left. Have you a dance left, Agatha? Uh, yes, my mum. The next yes, one. Yes, yes. 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 <laughs> well, may I have the pleasure? No, please. <laughs> Take great care of my little chatterbox, Mr. Harper. Uh, Margaret, I want to talk to you. In a moment. Lord Augustus Lawton. <laughs> Good evening, Lady Windermere. Sir James, will you take me into the ballroom, please? Augustus has been dining with us this evening. I've had quite enough of him for the moment. Certainly, Duchess. Lord Darlington. Want to speak to you particularly, dear boy. I am worn to a shadow. No, I don't look it. None of us men do look what we really are. Damned good thing, too. What I want to know is this. Who is she? Where does she come from? Why hasn't she got any relations? Damned nuisance relations. But they do make one so damned respectable. You're talking, I suppose, of Mrs. Erlin? I only met her six months ago. Until then, I never knew of her existence. You've seen a good deal of her since then. Yes, I have seen a good deal of her since then. Gad, the women are very down on her. I have been dining with Arabella this evening. By Jove, you should have heard what she said about Mrs. Erlin. She didn't leave a rag on her. I told her it didn't matter much, as the lady in question must have an extremely fine figure. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen Arabella's expression. Um, but look here, dear boy. I don't know what to do about Mrs. Erlin. God, she treats me with such damned indifference. She's deuce clever, too. She explains everything. She explains you. She has any amount of explanations for you. And all of them different. No explanations are necessary about my friendship with Mrs. Erlin, Godfather. <laughs> now, look here, dear fellow. Do you think Mrs. Erlin will ever get into this damn thing called society? Would you introduce her to Lady Windermere? No use beating about the confounded bush. Would you do that? Mrs. Erlin is coming here this evening. Your wife has sent her a card. Mrs. Erlin has received a card. 
But why didn't you tell me that before, dear boy? Would have saved me a heap of worry and damned misunderstanding. Mr. Cecil Graham. Good evening, Arthur. Good evening, Cecil. Why don't you ask me how I am? I like people to ask me how I am. It shows a widespread interest in my health. Now, tonight, I'm not at all well. Oh, I've been dining with my people. Wonder why it's once people are always so tedious. My father talked morality after dinner. <laughs> I told him he was old enough to know better, but my experience is as soon as people are old enough to know better, they don't know anything at all. Hello, Tuppy! Here you're going to be married again. Thought you were tired of that game. You're excessively trivial, my dear boy, excessively trivial. By the way, Tuppy, which is it? Have you been twice married and once divorced? Or twice divorced and once married? <laughs> I say you've been twice divorced and once married. It sounds so much more probable. Lord Windermere, yes. I have a most particular question to ask you. I'm afraid, you. if you'll excuse me, I must join my wife. So. Oh, <laughs> you mustn't dream of such a thing. It is most dangerous nowadays for an husband to pay attention to his wife in public. It always makes people think he beats her when they are alone. <laughs> um, uh, Margaret, Margaret, I really must speak with you. Will you hold my fan for me, Lord Darlington? Mm. Thanks. Uh, yes. Margaret, what you said before dinner was, of course, impossible. Hmm? If you in any way annoy or wound Mrs. Erlin, you will bring shame and sorrow on us both. Remember that. Oh, Margaret, only trust me. A wife should trust her husband. London is full of women who trust their husbands. One can always recognise them. They look so thoroughly unhappy. <laughs> I'm not going to be one of them. Lord Darlington, will you give me back my fan, please? <clears throat> Thanks. Mm. It's a useful thing, a fan, isn't it? <laughs> I want a friend tonight, Lord Darlington. I didn't know I would want one so soon. I knew this time would come someday, <laughs> Lady Windermere. <laughs> but why tonight? I will tell her. I must. It would be terrible if they're already seen. Uh, Margaret, could I... Mrs. Erlin. Uh, Lady Windermere, you dropped your fan. How do you do again, Lord Windermere? How charming your sweet wife looks. Quite a picture. It's terribly rash of you to come. But didn't you invite me? And it's the wisest thing I ever did in my life. By the way, you must pay me a good deal of attention this evening. I'm afraid of the women. The men, I can always manage. <laughs> How do you do, Lord Augustus? You have quite neglected me lately. I've not seen you since yesterday. <laughs> I'm afraid you're faithless. Everyone told me so. Now, really, Mrs. Erlin, allow me to explain. No, dear Lord Augustus, you can't explain anything. It is your chief charm. <laughs> if you find charms in me, Mrs. Erlin, how pale you are. Cowards are always pale. You look faint. Come out into the terrace. Yes. Lady Windermere. How beautifully your terrace is illuminated. Reminds me of Prince Doria's at Rome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how do you do, Mr. Graham? Isn't that your aunt, Lady Jedburgh? I should so much like to know her. Oh, certainly. If you wish it. Aunt Caroline, allow me to introduce Mrs. Erlin. So pleased to meet you, Lady Jedburgh. Your nephew and I are great friends. I'm so much interested in his political career. I think he's sure to be a wonderful success. He thinks like a Tory and talks like a radical, and that's so important nowadays. He's such a brilliant talker too, but we all know from whom he inherits that. <laughs> Lord Allendale was saying to me only yesterday in the park that Mr. Graham talks almost as well as his aunt. 
Most kind of you to say these charming things to me. Did you introduce Mrs. Erling to Lady Chadba? Had you, dear fellow, couldn't help it. That woman can make one do anything she wants. <laughs> How? I don't know. I hope to goodness she doesn't speak to me. Mm. On Thursday? Yes. With great pleasure. <laughs> what a bore it is to have to be civil to these dowagers. But they always insist on it. Do you know, Windermere, I think I'll dance with you first. It'll make Lord Augustus so jealous. Lord Augustus, Lord Windermere insists on my dancing with him first, and as it's his own house, I can't well refuse. You know, I'd much sooner dance with you. I wish I could think so, Mrs. Allen. Oh, you know it far too well. I can fancy a person dancing through life with you and finding it charming. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You are the most adorable of ladies. What a nice speech. So simple and so sincere. Just the sort of speech I like. <laughs> Who is that well-dressed woman talking with Augustus? I have the slightest idea. <coughs> Looks like an edition deluxe of one of your wicked French novels meant specially for the English market. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lord Augustus, you shall hold my bouquet while I dance with our host. <laughs> ah, Mr. Dumby. How are you? I'm so sorry I was out the last three times you called. <laughs> Come and lunch on Friday. Delighted. What a brute you are. Oh. I never can believe a word you say. Why did you tell me you did it nowhere? And what do you mean by calling on her three times, one name? My dear Laura. You haven't told me her name yet. Who is she? She is a Mrs. Erlin. That woman? Yes, that is what everyone calls her. How interesting. How intensely interesting. I really must have a good stare at her. I have heard the most shocking things about her. They say she is ruining poor Windermere. And Lady Windermere, who goes in for being so proper, invites her. <laughs> How extremely amusing. It takes a thoroughly good woman to do a thoroughly stupid thing. You are to lunch there on Friday. Why? Because I want you to take my husband with you. He has been so attentive lately, he has become a perfect nuisance. <laughs> this woman is just the thing he needs. He'll dance attendance upon her as long as she lets him and won't bother me. <laughs> I assure you, women of that kind are most useful. They form the basis of other people's marriages, huh? Oh, what a mystery you are. I wish you were. Oh. Yes, her coming here is monstrous, unbearable. I know now what you meant today. Why didn't you tell me right out? You should have. I couldn't. A man can't tell these things about another man. Oh, the house is tainted for me. I feel that every woman here sneers at me as she dances with my husband. What have I done to deserve this? I am degraded in my own eyes and I lack courage. I'm a coward. <clears throat> Margaret, you can't live with a man who treats you like this. What sort of life would you have with him? You would feel that he was lying to you every moment of the day. You would feel that the look in his eyes was false, his touch false, his passion false. When he was weary of others, you would have to comfort him. And when he was devoted to others, you would have to charm him. You would have to be to him the mask of his real life, the cloak to hide his secret. You are right. You are terribly right. Oh, but where am I to turn? You said you would be my friend, Lord Darlington. Tell me, what am I to do? Be my friend now. Yeah. Between men and women, there is no friendship possible. There is passion, enmity, worship, love, but no friendship. I love you. No. Yes, I love you. No, no. You are more to me than anything in the whole world. What does your husband give you? Nothing. I offer you my life. Lord Darlington. My whole life. Take it. 
and do with it what you will. I love you. I love you more than I've ever loved any living thing. From the moment I met you, I loved you blindly, adoringly, madly. Oh. Yes, you know it now. <laughs> Leave this house tonight. Tonight? There are moments when one has to choose between living one's own life fully, entirely, completely, or dragging out some false, shallow, degrading existence that the world and its hypocrisy demands. You have that moment now. Choose, my love. Choose. Oh. Ah, there we are, you fine. <laughs> <laughs> Choose. I have not the courage. Yes, you have the courage. There may be six months of pain, of disgrace even, but when you no longer bear his name, when you bear mine, all will be well. Margaret, my love, my wife that will be one day, yes, my wife. You know it. All London will know why you did it. And who can blame you? No one. And if they do, what matters? Just... Wrong? What is wrong? It is wrong for a man to abandon his wife for a shameless woman. It is wrong for a woman to remain with a man who so dishonours her. You said once you would allow of no compromise of these things. Well, make none now. Be brave. Be yourself. I am afraid of being myself. Let me think. Let me wait. My husband may return to me. And you would take him back? Uh, then I fear you are just the same as every other woman. In a week, you will be driving in the park with this Mrs. Erlen. She will be your constant guest, your dearest friend. You would endure anything rather than break with one blow this monstrous tie. Oh, give me time to think. I cannot answer you now. It must be now, or not at all. Then, not at all. You break my heart. Mine is already broken. Tomorrow I leave England. This is the last time I shall ever look on you. You will never see me again. For one moment, our lives met, our souls touched. They must never meet or touch again. Goodbye, Margaret. How alone I am in life. How terribly alone. <laughs> Dear Margaret, I have just been having the most delightful chat with Mrs. Erlen. I'm so sorry what I said this afternoon about her. Of course she must be all right if you invite her. She's such an attractive woman with such sensible views on life. I can't imagine why anyone speaks against her. It's those horrid nieces of mine, the Savile girls, always talking scandal. Where is Agatha? Ah, oh, there she is. I'm very angry with you, Mr. Hopper. You took Agatha out onto the terrace, and she's so very delicate. <laughs> Awfully sorry, Duchess. We went out for a moment and then got chatting together. Ah, about dear Australia, I suppose. Yes. Yes, there come Yes, Mama. Did Mr. Hopper? Yes, Mama. Oh, and what did you answer, oh, yes, child? Yes, Mama. Oh, my dear girl. Oh, you always say the right things. <laughs> oh, Mr. Hopper. James, <laughs> Agatha has told me everything. <laughs> oh, how cleverly you've both kept your secret. You don't mind my taking Agatha off to Australia then, Duchess? <laughs> to, to Australia? I don't mention that dreadful vulgar place. <laughs> but she said she'd like to come with me. Well, did you say that, Agatha? Yes, Mama. Well, rarely you say the silliest things possible. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I, I think that on the whole, Grosvenor Square is a much healthier place to reside in. <laughs> I mean, a lot of vulgar people live there, but at least there's no horrid little kangaroos crawling around. 
We'll talk about this tomorrow, James. You'll come to lunch. The Duke will wish to say a few words to you, I'm sure. I should like to have a chat with the Duke Duchess. He has not said a single word to me yet. Well, I think you'll find he has a great deal to say to you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so you want to take Agatha down now. Arabella. Oh, good night, dear Margaret. I'm afraid it's the old, old story, dear. Love. Oh, really. Good night, oh, Duchess. Hi. My dear Margaret, what an handsome woman your husband has been dancing with. I should be terribly jealous if I were you. Is she a very good friend of yours? No. Really? Good night, dear. Sensible woman, Lady Windermere. Most wives would have objected to Mrs. Arlen coming, but the lady has that uncommon thing called common sense. And Windermere knows that nothing looks so like innocence as an indiscretion. Yes. Windermere is becoming almost modern. <laughs> Never thought he would. Hmm. Good night, Lady Windermere. Mr. Dunby? Yes. Where, Mr. Dunby? Good night, Lady Windermere. What a fascinating woman Mrs. Erlin is. She's coming to lunch Thursday. Won't you come too? I expect the bishop. I am afraid I'm engaged, Lady Jedburgh. Right. Good night, dear. <laughs> Lady Windermere. Charming ball it has been. It quite reminds me of old days. And I see there are just as many fools in society as they used to be. So pleased to find nothing has altered. <laughs> Except Margaret. She's grown quite pretty. Last time I saw her, 20 years ago, she was a fright in a flannel. <laughs> Positive fright, I assure you. And the dear Duchess, and that sweet Lady Agatha, just the type of girl I like. Well, really, Windermere, if I am to be the Duchess's sister-in-law... Are you? Oh, yes. He's to call tomorrow at 12 o'clock. He wanted to propose tonight. In fact, he did. He kept on proposing. Poor Augustus, you know how he repeats himself. Such a bad habit. But I told him I wouldn't give him an answer till tomorrow. Of course I'm going to take him. And I dare say I'll make him an admirable wife, as wives go. And there's a great deal of good in Lord Augustus. Of course, you must help me in this matter. Well, I'm not called on to encourage Lord Augustus, I suppose. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> no, 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 I do the encouraging. But you will make me a handsome settlement, Windermere, won't you? Is that what you want to talk to me about tonight? Yes. Well, well I will not talk of it here. Well, then we will talk of it on a terrace. Even business should have a picturesque background, should it not, Windermere? With a proper background, women can do anything. Well, won't tomorrow do as well? No, you see, tomorrow I'm going to accept him, and I think it would be a good thing if I was able to tell him that I had... Well, what shall I say? £200 a year left to me by a third cousin or second husband or some distant relative of that kind. It would be an additional attraction, wouldn't it? You have a delightful opportunity now of paying me a compliment, Windermere. <laughs> but you're not very clever at paying compliments, are you? I'm afraid Margaret doesn't encourage you in that excellent habit. It's a great mistake on her part. When men give up saying what is charming, they give up thinking what is charming. But seriously, what do you say to 200 pounds? Mm? Good night, my dear. To stay in this house a moment longer is impossible. Tonight, a man who loves me offered me his whole life. I refused it. It was foolish of me. I will offer him mine now. I will give him mine now. I will go to Lord Darlington. Arthur has never understood me. And when he reads this, he will. He may do as he chooses with his life now. It is he who has broken the bond of marriage, not I. I only break its bondage. He 
Miss Lee do Windermere in the ballroom? Uh, her ladyship has just gone out. Gone out? She's not on the terrace. Well, no, madam. Her ladyship has gone out of the house. Out of the house? Well, yes, madam. Her ladyship told me she left a letter for his lordship on the table. A letter for Lord Windermere? On the table? Yes, madam. Thank you. Gone out of the house? A letter addressed to her husband? No, no, it would be impossible. Life doesn't repeat its tragedies like that. Oh, why does this horrible fancy come across me? Why do I remember now the one moment in my life I most wish to forget? Oh, how terrible! The same words that 20 years ago I wrote to her father, and how bitterly I've been punished for it. No, my punishment, my real punishment, is tonight, is now. Oh, um, have you said goodnight to my wife? Yes. Yes. Um, where is she? Oh, she's very tired. She's gone to bed. She said she had a headache. Oh, I must go to her. Oh, no, no, it's nothing serious. She's only very tired, that is all. Oh. <laughs> Besides, there are people still in the supper room. She wants you to make her apologies to them. She said she didn't wish to be disturbed. She asked me to tell you... Um, you've dropped something. Oh. Yes. Yes, yes, I have. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, an address. <laughs> Lady Jedburgh. <laughs> Lunch. <laughs> Would you ask them to call my carriage, please? Oh, certainly. Thanks. What can I do? What can I do? I, I feel a passion awakening within me that I have never felt before. The daughter must not be like the mother. That would be terrible. A moment may ruin a life. Who knows that better than I? How can I save her? How can I save my child? Dear lady, I am in such suspense. May I not have an answer to my request? Augustus, listen to me. You must take Lord Windermere down to your club at once and keep him there for as long as possible. You understand? But you said you wished me to keep early hours. Do what I tell you. Do what I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and... My reward. Your reward? Your reward? Oh, ask me that tomorrow. But don't let Windermere out of your sight tonight. If you do, I will never forgive you. I will never speak to you again. I'll have nothing more to do with you. Well, really, <laughs> I might be her husband already. <laughs> Why doesn't he come? He should be here. Why isn't he here to wake by passionate words some fire within me? I'm cold. Cold is a loveless thing. Arthur must have read my letter by this time. If he cared for me, he would have come after me. He would have taken me back by force, but he doesn't care. He's entrammeled by this woman, fascinated by her, dominated by her. 
If a woman really wants to hold a man, she merely has to appeal to what is worst in him. We make gods of men and they leave us. Others make brutes of them and they fawn and are faithful. How hideous life is. But will he love me always? This man to whom I am giving my life, what do I bring him? <coughs> Lips that have lost the note of joy. Eyes that have blinded by tears. Chill hands and icy heart. Oh, I bring him nothing. Oh, I must go back. Oh, no, I can't go back. My letter has put me in their power. Arthur would not take me back. Oh, that fatal letter. No. No, Lord Darlington leaves England tomorrow. I will go with him. I have no choice. No, 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 I will go back. Let Arthur do with me as he pleases. I can't wait here. It has been madness my coming. I must go at once. As for Lord Darlington... Oh, oh he's here. Oh, what shall I do? What shall I say to him? Will he let me go at all? I've heard that men are brutal. Horrible. Oh! <laughs> Lady Windermere. Oh. Thank heaven I'm in time. You must go back to your husband's house immediately. Must? Yes, you must. There is not a second to be lost. Lord Darlington may return at any moment. No, don't come near me. You are on the brink of ruin. You are on the brink of a hideous precipice. You must leave this place at once. My carriage is waiting at the corner of the street. You must come with me and drive straight home. No! What are you doing? Mrs. Erland, if you had not come here, I would have gone back. But now that I see you, I feel that nothing in the whole world would induce me to live under the same roof as Lord Windermere. You fill me with horror. There is something about you that stirs the wildest rage within me, and I know why you're here. And my husband sent you to lure me back, that I might serve as a blind to whatever relations exist between you. Oh. You don't think that you can't... Go back to my husband, Mrs. Erlin. He belongs to you and not to me. Oh, but he shall better prepare himself. He shall have a scandal. He shall have the worst scandal that's been in London for years. He shall see his name in every vile paper, mine on every hideous placard. No, no. Yes, he shall. To stay himself at home and to send you as his messenger. Oh, it was infamous. Infamous! Oh, Lady Windermere, you wrong me horribly. You wrong your husband horribly. He doesn't know you are here. He thinks you are safe in your own house. He thinks you are asleep in your own room. He never read the mad letter you wrote to him. Never read it? No, he knows nothing about it. How simple you think me. You are lying to me. I am not. I am telling you the truth. If my husband didn't read my letter, how is it that you are here? Who told you I had left the house you were shameless enough to enter? Who told you I had gone? My husband told you and sent you to decoy me back. Your husband has never seen the letter. I saw it. I opened it. I read it. You opened a letter of mine to my husband. You wouldn't dare. Dare? Oh, to save you from the abyss into which you are falling, there is nothing in the world I would not dare. Nothing in the whole world. Here is the letter. Your husband never read it. He never shall read it. It should never have been written. How do I know that that was my letter? You seem to think the commonest device can take me in. Oh, why do you disbelieve everything I tell you? What object do you think I have in coming here except to save you from utter ruin? To save you from the consequence of a hideous mistake? That letter, that is burnt now, was your letter, I swear to you. You took good care to burn it before I had examined it. I cannot trust you. Think as you like about me. Say what you choose against me. But go back. Go back to the husband you love. I do not love him. You do. And you know that he loves you. He does not understand what love is. He understands this as little as you do. Oh, but I see what you want. It would be a great advantage for you to get me back. Dear heaven, what a life I would have then. Living at the mercy of a woman who has no pity in her. A woman whom it is an infamy to meet. A, a degradation to know. A vile woman. An old woman who comes between husband and wife. Lady Windermere, Lady Windermere, don't say such terrible things. <laughs> You don't know how terrible and how unjust they are. Listen, you must listen. 
Only go back to your husband, and I promise never to communicate with him again on any pretext. Never to see him. Never to have anything to do with his life. Or yours. The money he gave me, he gave me not through love, but through hatred. Not in worship, but in contempt. The hold I have ah, over him. You admit you have a hold? Yes, and I will tell you what it is. It is his love for you, Lady Windermere. You expect me to believe that? You must believe it. It is true. It is his love for you that made him submit to... Oh, call it what you will. Tyranny, threats, anything you choose. But it is his love for you. His desire to spare you. Shame. Yes, shame and disgrace. What do you mean? You are insolent. What have I to do with you? Nothing. But I tell you that your husband loves you. And that you may never meet with such love again in your whole life. If you throw it away, the day may come when you will starve for love and it will not be given to you. Beg for love and it will be denied you. Arthur loves you. Arthur? Arthur? And you say there is nothing between you? Lady Windermere, before heaven, your husband is guiltless of all offences towards you. And I, I tell you that had it ever occurred to me that such a monstrous suspicion would have entered your mind, I would have died rather than cross your life. Gladly died. You talk as if you had a heart. Women like you have no hearts. You're bought and sold. Believe what you choose about me. I'm not worth a moment's sorrow. But don't spoil your beautiful young life on my account. You don't know what may be in store for you unless you leave this house at once. You don't know what it is to fall into the pit. To be despised, mocked, abandoned, sneered at. To be an outcast. To hear the horrible laughter of the world. One pays for one's sin, and then one pays again, and all one's life one pays. You must never know that. I may have wrecked my own life, but I will not let you wreck yours. You... Why, you are a mere girl. You would be lost. You couldn't stand dishonor. Go back to the husband that loves you. You have a child, Lady Windermere. Go back to that child, who even now in pain or in joy may be calling to you. God gave you that child, and he will require from you that you make his life fine, that you watch over him. What answer will you make to God if his life is ruined through you? To your house, Lady Windermere. Your husband loves you. He has never swerved for a moment from the love he bears you. But even if he had a thousand loves, you must stay with your child. If he was harsh to you, you must stay with your child. If he ill-treated you, you must stay with your child. If he abandoned you, your place is with your child. <laughs> oh, Lady Windermere. Take me home. Take me home. <laughs> now, where is your cloak? Ah, here it is. Now, come, put it on. Now, come at once. Stop, don't you hear voices? No, no, there was no one. Yes, there is, listen. Oh, that's my husband's voice. He's coming in, save me. Oh, it's some plot you have sent for him. Silence, I am here to save you, but I fear it is too late. There, the first chance you have, slip out. But you? Never mind me, I'll face them. Lord Augustus, then it is I who am lost. What a nuisance they're throwing us out of the club at this hour! It's only two o'clock. 
lively part of the evening's only just beginning. <coughs> well, this is nice. <laughs> Uh, it's very good of you, Lord Darlington, allowing Augustus to force our company on you, but I'm afraid I can't stay long. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. You'll take a cigarette, won't you? Uh, no, thanks. My dear boy, you must not think of going. I have a great deal to talk to you about. I'm damned important, too. Oh, and we all know what that is. Tuppy can't talk about anything but Mrs Erlen. Oh, well, that's no business of yours, is it, Cecil? None. That is why it interests me. My own business always bores me to death. <laughs> I prefer other people's. Have a drink, you fellows. Cecil, you'll have a whiskey and soda? Oh, thanks. Mrs Erlen looks very handsome tonight, didn't she? I'm not one of her admirers. I used to be, but I am now. Why, she actually made me introduce her to poor dear Aunt Caroline. Uh. I believe she's going to lunch there. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> she is, really. Excuse me, you fellows, but I'm going away tomorrow and I have a few letters to write. Clever woman, Mrs. Allen. Hello, Dumby. I thought you were asleep. I am. I usually am. Uh, a very clever woman. <laughs> Knows perfectly well what a damn fool I am. Knows it as well as I do myself. <laughs> but it is a great thing to come across a woman who thoroughly understands one. And it is an awfully dangerous thing. They usually end up by marrying one. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, Tuppy, you were never going to see her again. Yes, yes, you told me so yesterday evening at the club. You said you heard. She gave us a quiet. Oh, she explained that. Ah, and the Wiesbaden affair. Oh, she explained that too. Uh, and her income, uh, Tuppy, has she explained that? She's going to explain that uh, tomorrow. <laughs> mm, awfully commercial women nowadays. Our grandmothers threw their caps over the mills, of course, but by Jove, their granddaughters only throw their caps over the mills that can raise a wind for them. <laughs> you want to make her out a wicked woman. She is not. No, yeah, wicked women bother one. Good women bore one. That is the only difference between them. Mrs. Erlin has a future before her. Mrs. Erlin has a past before her. I prefer women with a past. They're always so damned amusing to talk to. Well, you'll have lots of topics of conversation with her, Tuppy. <laughs> You're getting annoying, dear boy. Getting damned annoying. Now, Tuppy, you've lost your figure and you've lost your character. Don't lose your temper. <laughs> you've only got one. My dear boy, if I wasn't the most good-natured man in London... I... We'd treat you with more respect, wouldn't we, Tuppy? The youth of the present day are quite monstrous. They have absolutely no respect for dyed hair. Mrs. Erlen has a very great respect for dear Tuppy. And Mrs. Erlen sets an admirable example to the rest of her sex. It is perfectly brutal the way most women behave towards men who are not their husbands. Oh, Dumby, you are ridiculous. And Cecil, you let your tongue run away with you. Mm. You must leave Mrs. Erlen alone. You really don't know anything about her, yet you're always talking scandal against her. My dear Arthur, I never talk scandal. I only talk gossip. <laughs> well, what's the difference? Oh, gossip is charming. History is merely gossip. But scandal, scandal is gossip made tedious by morality. Oh. Now, I never moralize. A man who moralizes is usually a hypocrite. And a woman who moralizes is invariably plain. <laughs> Just my sentiments, dear boy, just my sentiments. <laughs> uh, sorry to hear it, Tuppy. Whenever anybody agrees with me, I always feel I must be wrong. <laughs> I say, Darlington, yeah. let us have some cards. Right. You'll play Arthur, won't you? Oh, no, thanks, Cecil. Good heavens, how marriage ruins a man. I'm quite looking forward to it. Oh. It's as demoralizing as cigarettes and far more expensive. You'll play, of course, Tuppy. Can't, dear boy. Promise Mrs. Erlen never to play or drink again. Thank you. <laughs> now, my dear Tuppy, don't be led astray into the paths of virtue. Reformed, you would be perfectly tedious. That is the worst of women. They always want one to be good. They like to find us irretrievably bad and leave us quite unattractively good. They always do find us bad. I don't think we're bad. I think we're all good, except Tuppy. <laughs> no. We are all in the gutter. 
but some of us are looking at the stars. <laughs> we are all in the... Upon my word, you are very romantic tonight, Darlington. Yeah, too romantic. Ooh. He must be in love. Ooh. Yes! Who is the girl? The woman I love is not free. Or thinks she isn't. Oh, a married woman, then. Well, there's nothing in the world like the devotion of a married woman. It's a thing no married man knows anything about. <laughs> no, she does not love me. She is a good woman. She is the only good woman I've ever met in my life. Well, you are a lucky fellow. I have met hundreds of them. <laughs> I never seem to meet anything but good women. <laughs> this woman has purity and innocence. She has everything we men have lost. My dear fellow, what on earth should we men be doing going about with purity and innocence? A carefully thought out buttonhole is much more effective. <laughs> you say she doesn't love you? No, she does not. I congratulate you then. There are only two tragedies in this world. One is not getting what one wants, the other's getting it. The last is much worse. <laughs> but I am interested to hear she doesn't love you. How long could you love a woman who didn't love you, Cecil? A woman who didn't love me? Mm. Oh, all my life. Yeah. <laughs> so could I, but it's so difficult to meet one. How can you be so conceited? I didn't say it as a matter of conceit. I said it as a matter of regret. I have been wildly, madly adored, and it has been an immense nuisance. <laughs> I should like to be allowed a little time for myself, now and then. What cynics you fellows are. What's a cynic? A man who knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. And a sentimentalist, my dear Darlington, is a man who sees an absurd value in everything. You always amuse me, Cecil. You speak as if you are a man of experience. I am. <laughs> you are far too young. <laughs> that is a great error. Experience is a question of instinct about life. I have got it. Tuppy has not. Experience is the name that Tuppy gives to his mistakes. Experience is the name everyone gives to their mistakes. Life would be very dull without them. Of course, you are quite faithful to this woman you're in love with, Darlington. <coughs> to this good woman. Cecil, when a man really loves a woman, all other women in the world become absolutely meaningless. Love changes one. I am changed. Dear me, how very interesting. Tuppy, I want to talk to you. It's no use talking to Tuppy. You might as well talk to a brick wall. But I like talking to a brick wall. It's the only thing in the world that never contradicts me. <laughs> Tuppy? Well, what is it? What is it? <coughs> Darlington has been moralizing and talking about the purity of love and that sort of thing. And he has some woman here in his rooms all the time. No, really? Really? Yes. Here is her fan. By Joe. <laughs> By Joe! Right, I'm off, Lord Darlington. Uh, sorry you're leaving England so soon. Pray, call on us when you get back. My wife and I will be charmed to see you. I'm afraid I shall be away for many years. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur! Yes, what is it? I want to speak to you for a moment. No, 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 no. do you come? Oh, I can't, I'm off. It is something very particular. It'll interest you it's enormously. It's nonsense, Cecil. It isn't. It isn't really. My dear fellow, Cecil has something to show. Well, what is it? <coughs> Darlington has a woman here in his rooms. Oh, really? <laughs> here is her fan. <coughs> yes, amusing, isn't it? <laughs> Good God. What is the matter? Lord Darlington! Lord Darlington! Yes? <laughs> what? What is my wife's fan doing here in your oh, room? No, hands off me, Cecil, don't touch Your wife's fan? Yes, here it is. I don't know. No, you must know, and I demand an explanation. Now, gentlemen, I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable... No, don't hold me, you fool! She is here after all. No, speak, sir! Why is my wife's fan here? 
Answer me, or by God, I'll search your rooms and invite you my... You not search my rooms. You have no right to do so. I forbid you. You scoundrel! Oh, I dare you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Hopper! Gentlemen, please, we've all had a drink. I'll not leave your room till I've searched every corner of it. And I said I forbid you! No! 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 What moves behind that curtain? Mrs. <laughs> I'm afraid I took your wife's fan in mistake of my own as I was leaving your house this evening. Lord Windermere, I am so sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, as Lady Wintermere makes her way home to see what fate befalls her, we'd like to take this opportunity for a musical interlude. So, if you're welcome to the stage, Mr. Parker, Maud and Lillian. <laughs> and our guest singer for the evening, please welcome to the stage, the Duchess of Berwick. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know you want to. 
<laughs> Here we go. Keep your hands off my pants, sir. It doesn't belong to you. I don't know what's your plan, sir. I do know it takes two. I'm a Puritan lady. You're a devilish man. So please, sir. to the Windermere household, <laughs> where Lady Windermere's heart is heavy with worry. <laughs> How can I tell Arthur? I can't tell him it would kill me. I wonder what happened after I escaped that horrible room. Perhaps she told them of the true reason of her being there and the real reason of that fatal fan of mine. Oh, if he knows, he would never forgive me. How securely one thinks one lives out of reach of temptation, sin, folly, and then suddenly, oh, life is terrible. It rules us, we do not rule it. Did you ring the bell, miss? Oh, uh, yes, thank you, Rosalie. Have you found out what time Lord Windermere came in last night? His lordship didn't come in till five o'clock. Five o'clock? Uh, he knocked at my door this morning, didn't he? Yes, my lady, at half past nine. I told him your ladyship wasn't awake yet. Did he? Did? Oh, something about your ladyship's fan. I didn't quite catch what his lordship said. <laughs> Has the fan been lost, my lady? I can't find it. Mr. Parker can't find it in any of the rooms. He has looked in all of them, and on the terrace as well. Oh, it doesn't matter. Tell Parker not to trouble, that will do. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Erlen is sure to tell him. I can fancy a person doing a wonderful act of self-sacrifice, doing it spontaneously, recklessly, nobly, and afterwards, finding out that it costs too much. Now, why should she hesitate between her ruin and mine? Oh. oh, there is a bitter irony in things. A bitter irony in the way we talk of good and bad women. What a lesson. And what a pity that in life we only get our lessons once they are of no use to us. <laughs> For even if she doesn't tell him, I must. Oh, the shame of it. The shame of it to tell it is to live through it all again. Actions are the first tragedy in life, words are the second. Oh, words are perhaps the worst, words are merciless. Oh. Margaret? <laughs> oh, how pale you look. I slept very badly. I'm so sorry. I came in dreadfully late and didn't like to wake you. <laughs> oh, you're crying, dear. Yes, Arthur, I am crying, for I have something to tell oh, my you. My dear child, you're not well. You, you've been doing too much. <laughs> Let's go away to the country. Hmm? You'll be all right at Selby. There's no use us staying here. The season's almost over. But... Oh, my poor darling. <laughs> We can go away today if you like. We can easily catch the 340. I'll send a wire to Fanon. <laughs> yes, let's go away today. Oh. oh, no, I can't go today, Arthur. There is someone I must see before I leave town. Someone who has been kind to me. Kind to you? Far more than that. I will tell you. Only love me. Love me as you used to love me. Used to? Oh, you're not thinking of that wretched woman. You don't still imagine... No, you couldn't. I don't. I know now I was wrong and foolish. It, it was very good of you to receive her last night, but you're never to see her again. Why do you say that? Oh, Margaret, I... I thought that Mrs. Erlin was a... 
woman more sinned against than sinning. I thought she wanted to be good, to get back to a place she'd lost by a moment's folly and to lead again a decent life. And, and I believe what she told me, but I was mistaken in her. She is bad, as bad as a woman can be. Arthur, Arthur don't talk so bitterly about any woman. I don't think now that people can be divided into the good and the bad as though they were two separate races or creations. What are called good women may have terrible things in them. They're mad moods of recklessness, jealousy, sin. And bad women, as they are termed, may have in them sorrow, repentance, sacrifice. I don't think Mrs. Erlin a bad woman. I know she's not. My dear child, the woman is impossible and you're never to see her again. But I want to see her. I want her to come here. Never! She came here once as your guest. What? She must come now as mine. That is but uh, She should never have come here. <laughs> it's too late, Arthur, to say that now. Margaret, if you knew where Mrs. Erlin went last night after she left this house, you would not sit in the same room as her. <laughs> it was absolutely shameless. The whole thing. Arthur, I can't bear it any longer. Well, I must tell you. George. Last night. Mrs. Erlin has called to return your ladyship's fan, which she took away by mistake last night. <laughs> Mrs. Erlin's left a message on the card. Oh. Um, ask Mrs. Erlin to be kind enough to come up. And say I shall be very glad to see her. She wants to see me, Arthur. Oh, I beg you not to, Margaret. Oh, at least let me see her first, at any rate. She's a very dangerous woman. I know, and you don't realise what you're doing. It is right that I should see her. My child, you may be on the brink of a great sorrow. Don't go to meet it. It's absolutely necessary that I should see her before you do. Why should it be necessary? Mrs. Uh, Lynn. Oh. <laughs> How do you do, Lady Wintermere? How do you do? Do you know, Lady Wintermere, I am so sorry about your fan. I can't imagine how I made such a silly mistake. Most stupid of me. And as I was driving in your direction, I thought I would take the opportunity of returning your property in person, with many apologies for my carelessness, and of bidding you goodbye. Goodbye? Are you going away then, Mrs. Erland? Yes, I'm going to live abroad again. The English climate doesn't suit me. My heart is affected here, and that I don't like. Besides, London is too full of fogs and serious people, Windermere. Whether the fogs produce the serious people or whether the serious people produce the fogs, I don't know, but the whole thing rather gets on my nerves. And so I'm leaving this afternoon by the club train. This afternoon? But I'd so hope to come and see you. Oh, how kind of you. But I'm afraid I must go. Shall I never see you again, Mrs. Erlin? I'm afraid not. Our lives lie too far apart. But there is a little thing I would like you to do for me. I want a photograph of you, Lady Windermere. And I fancy myself a collector. Would you give one to me? You don't know how gratified I should be. Oh, certainly. There is one on that table. It's monstrous you're intruding yourself here after your conduct last night. My dear Windermere, manners before morals. <laughs> I'm afraid this is very flattering. I'm not so pretty as that. You are much prettier. <laughs> <laughs> but haven't you got one of yourself with your little boy? I have. Would you prefer one of those? Yes. Well, I'll go and get it for you. If you'll excuse me a moment, I have one upstairs. Oh, well, I'm so sorry to give you so much trouble, Lady Windermere. It's no trouble at all, Mrs. Erlen. You seem rather out of temper this morning, Windermere. Why should you be? Margaret and I get on charmingly together. I can't bear to see you with her. Besides, you... You've not told me the truth, Mrs. Erlin. I've not told her the truth, you mean. Well, I sometimes wish you had. I should have been spared then the misery, the anxiety, the annoyance of these past months. But rather than my wife should know, that the woman whom she has mourned as dead is living and a, 
a bad woman preying upon life as I know you now to be, rather than that, I was ready to supply you with money to pay bill after bill, extravagance after extravagance, to risk what occurred yesterday, the first quarrel I have ever had with my wife. I, I tell you, the only bitter words that came from those sweet lips of hers were on your account, and I hate to see you next to her. I used to think that that for all your faults, you were frank and honest, but you're not. Why do you say that? What, you made me get you an invitation to my wife's party, and within an hour of leaving this house, you're found in a man's rooms. You're disgraced before everyone. Yes. Therefore, I have the right to look upon you as what you are. A worthless, vicious woman. I have the right to tell you never to enter this house. Never to attempt to come near my wife. My daughter, you no, mean. You have no right to... To claim her as your daughter. You... You abandoned her. You, you abandoned her when she was but a child in the cradle. Abandoned her for your lover who abandoned you in turn. Do you count that to his credit, Windermere, or to mine? Well, to his, now that I know you. Take care. You had better be careful. I'm not going to mince words for you. I know you thoroughly. I question that. No, 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 I do know you. For 20 years of your life, you lived without a thought for your child. And then one day, you read in the papers that she'd married a rich man, and you saw your hideous chance. You knew that to spare her the ignominy of learning that a woman like you was her mother, I would endure... Anything. So you began your blackmailing. Don't use ugly words, Windermere. They are vulgar. I saw my chance, it is true, and took it. Y y yes, you took it, and then you spoiled it all by being found out. You're quite right. I spoiled it all. And as for your blunder in taking my wife's fan from here and leaving it about Darlington's rooms, it's unpardonable. I shall never let my wife use it again. The thing is soiled for me. Should have kept it, not bought it back. I think I shall keep it. It is extremely pretty. I shall ask Margaret to give it to me. I'm sure she'll have no objection. Oh, I wish that at the same time she would give you a miniature she kisses every night before she prays of a young, innocent-looking girl with beautiful red hair. Oh, yes. I remember. How long ago that seems. It was done before I was married. Red hair and an innocent expression were the fashion then, Windermere. What do you mean by coming here this morning? What is your object? To bid goodbye to my dear daughter, of course. Mrs. Erlin. Oh, don't imagine I'm going to have some pathetic scene with her. Weep on her neck and tell her who I am. I have no ambition to play mother. Only once in my life have I known a mother's feelings, and that was last night. And they were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Made me suffer. Made me suffer too much. No, I, I want to live childless still. Besides, my dear Windermere, how on earth could I pose as a mother with a grown-up daughter? Margaret is 21, and I've never admitted that I'm more than 29. <laughs> 30 at the most. 29 when there are pink shades, 30 when there are not. So you see what difficulties it would involve. <laughs> no, as far as I'm concerned, let your wife cherish the memory of this dead, stainless mother. Why should I interfere with her illusions? I find it hard enough to keep my own. I thought I had no heart. But I find I have. And a heart doesn't suit me. Somehow it doesn't go with modern dress. <laughs> Makes one look old and spoils one's career at critical moments. You fill me with horror. Absolute horror. I suppose, Windermere, you would like me to retire into a convent 
or become a hospital nurse or something of that kind as people do in silly novels. In real life, we don't do such things. Not as long as we have good looks left at any rate. No, what consoles us nowadays is not repentance, but pleasure. Repentance is quite out of date. No, I shall pass entirely out of your two lives. My coming into them has been a mistake. A fatal mistake? Almost fatal. I'm sorry now. I did not tell my wife the whole thing at once. I regret my bad actions. You regret your good ones. That is the difference between us. No, I don't trust you. I will tell my wife. It's right that she should know. And from me. It will cause her infinite pain. But it's right that she should know. If you tell her, I will make my name so infamous that it will mar every moment of her life. It will ruin her and make her wretched. If you dare to tell her, there is no depth of degradation I will not sink to. No pit of shame I will not enter. Why? If I told you I cared for her. Perhaps loved her even. You would sneer at me, wouldn't you? I should think that it was not true. A, a mother's love means devotion, unselfishness and sacrifice. What could you know of such things? You're quite right. <laughs> what could I know? As for telling my daughter who I am, that is my secret, not yours. If I decide she should know such a thing, I will tell her before I leave this house. If not, I shall never tell her. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry to have kept you waiting. I couldn't find the photograph anywhere. At last, I discovered it in my husband's dressing room. <laughs> he had stolen it. Oh, I'm, I'm not surprised. It is charming. And so that is your little boy. What is he called? Gerard, after my dear father. Oh, really? Yes. If it had been a girl, I would have called it after my mother. She had the same name as myself, Margaret. Oh. My name is Margaret, too. Indeed? Yes. <laughs> you are devoted to your mother's memory, Lady Windermere. Your husband tells me. We all have ideals in life. At least we all should have, and mine is my mother. <coughs> Ideals are dangerous things. <coughs> Realities are better. They wound, but they are better. If I lost my ideals, I should lose everything. Everything? Yes. Did your father often speak to you of your mother? No. No, it gave him too much pain. He told me how my mother had died a few months after I was born. His eyes filled with tears as he spoke. Then he begged me never to mention her name again. It made him suffer even to hear it. My father... My father really died of a broken heart. His was the most ruined I'm afraid I... I really must be going now, Lady Windermere. Oh, no, don't. I think I'd better. My carriage must have come back by this time. I sent it to Lady Jedburgh with a note. Arthur, would you mind seeing if Mrs Erlen's carriage is Oh, oh pray, don't trouble, Lady yes. Windermere. Arthur, do I... go, please. Uh, yes, very well. I... Yeah. Oh, what am I to say to you? You saved me last night. Oh, don't speak of it. I must speak of it. I can't let you think I'm going to accept this sacrifice. It is too great. I'm going to tell my husband everything. It is my duty. It is not your duty. You say you owe me something. I owe you everything. Then pay your debt by silence. Don't spoil the one good thing I've done in my life by telling it to anyone. Promise me that what passed last night will remain a secret between us. You must not bring misery into your husband's life. Why spoil his love? Love is easily killed. How easily love is killed. Pledge me your word, Lady Windermere, that you will never tell him. I insist upon it. It is your will, not mine. Yes, it is my will.
And never forget your child. I like to think of you as a mother. I like you to think of yourself as one. I always will now. Only once in my life have I forgotten my own mother, and that was last night. If I'd remembered I would not have been so foolish, so wicked. <laughs> last night is quite over. The carriage has not come back yet, Mrs. Erlin. Oh, makes no matter. I'll take a hansom. There's nothing in the world so respectable as a good Shrewsbury and Talbot. <laughs> and now, my dear Lady Windermere, <coughs> it is really goodbye. I remember. You'll think me absurd, but do you know, I've taken a great fancy to this fan I was silly enough to run away with last night. I wonder, would you give it to me? Your husband says you may. I know it was his present. Oh, certainly, if it will give you pleasure. Oh, but it has my name on it. Margaret. But we have the same name. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Do have it. What a wonderful chance our names being the same. Quite wonderful. Thanks. It will always remind me of you. Lord oh. Augustus Norton. <laughs> Good morning, dear boy. Good morning, Lady Wind. Mrs. Erlen. Lord Augustus, how do you do? Are you quite well this morning? Quite well, thank you. Well, you don't look well at all. You stop up too late. It is bad for you. You really should take more care of yourself. Mrs. Erlin's carriage has come. Well, won't you see me down to my carriage, Lord Augustus? Oh, allow me? Oh, no, no, I want Lord Augustus. I have a special message for the dear Duchess. Lord Augustus? If you really desire it, Mrs. Erlin. Oh, of course I do. <coughs> and really, my dear, it's about time you started to call me Margaret. Well. <laughs> you will never speak against Mrs. Erlen again, Arthur, will you? She is better than one thought her. She is better than I am. Oh, child, you and she belong to different worlds. Into your world, evil has never entered. Don't say that, Arthur. There is the same world for all of us, and good and evil, sin and innocence, go through it hand in hand. To shut one's eyes to half of life that one might live securely is as though one blinded oneself, that one might walk with more safety in a land of pit and precipice. Darling, why do you say that? Because I who had shut my eyes to life, came to the brink. And one who separated no, us... No, no, we were never separated. We must never be again. Mm. Mm. Margaret, it... Don't love me less, and I will trust you more. I will trust you absolutely. Arthur! Mrs. Erlen, Margaret has explained everything. Yeah. <laughs> my dear fellow, she has just explained every damn thing. We all wronged her immensely. It was entirely for my sake she went to Darlington's rooms. Caught us in the club. Fact is, wanted to put me out of suspense. <laughs> and being told I had gone on, followed, naturally frightened, when she heard a lot of us coming in, retired to another room. Ryan, I assure you, most gratifying to me, the whole thing. <laughs> we all behaved brutally to her. She is just the woman for me. Suits me down to the ground. Oh, my dear Augustus. All the conditions she makes are that we live entirely out of England. Very good thing, too. Damned clubs, damned climate, damned cooks, damned everything. Sick of it all. It's Mrs. Erlen. Yes, Lady Windermere. Mrs. Erlen has done me the honor of accepting my hand. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's the old, old story. Love. <laughs> well, he is certainly marrying a very clever woman. He 
certainly marrying a very good woman. <laughs>